Hey everyone, um, I am Focus, and we're here with the Rampage Open Playoffs or Finals podcast. Um, tonight we're gonna have Cham Wu from Icon, um, Feathers and Fur from Roar. You guys, you guys can say hi if you want to. <laughs> oh, my bad. Hey, what's up? Hi. <laughs> uh, we have Krakow from ST. Hey. Uh, Unbound from WWT. Yo. And then bumping up who has casted pretty much all of the Rampage Open games uh, this season. Um, hey so guys, how we doing? He's going to take it over from here with the general flow and then going into players and uh, teams. Yeah, so we are just going to go over just general player stats. We're going to start of RAR and we're going to start in the top lane with the top laner unhonorable. Um, so, um, what, so we is kill death he has a pretty good kda this season sitting at 3.83 um which is honestly pretty good what do you guys think about that uh i guess i'll jump in i think it was pretty interesting because like the first two or three weeks rar didn't have him i think they kind of struggled a little bit but once they brought him in i think rar really kind of on their stride i guess because now they're in finals with them yeah especially uh with him playing like the the champions like the Yasuo and having just decent damage per minute, I think that that definitely uh definitely helped Rar out with that uh that top lane. If we uh, look at the top lane matchup for uh he's going to be playing against Grog, uh, so who also has Yasuo as a notable champion, so that will be a contested pick for them. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if that gets contested or just straight up banned out of the series. Well, I think in regards to um, approaching my team, a.k.a. RAR, um, part and parcel of how Unhonorable came to kind of be on the team uh, primarily came from instability, perhaps in the organization. Um, we practice a policy of continually kind of rotating people around, for better or worse. Um, Unhonorable himself spent a... He, he works Friday nights, so... He was able to come in and kind of cover off a couple of games for us usually. Um, and he kind of will float, obviously, between top and alternatively jungle, where he has found himself a fair bit. Um, as Focus perhaps alluded to previously, Rar has the tendency to rotate people around, for better or worse. Um, and even and that policy is going to kind of continue into the finals with people taking on kind of multiple roles here and there. Um almost in, in the vein of a meritocracy because all of us kind of got us there and it wouldn't be fair to, at this final point, go, well, these five are going to play. Uh, you, person who's just came come in and helped us a fair bit, no, you get the bench for this week. So yeah. <laughs> Don't want to pull 100 T, do you? Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Star Wars plays top two, right? Yeah, you guys right. flip those two around. And I think what's really what's really beneficial about that strategy for you guys is you uh, you free up a lot of room with target bans. If someone gets target banned with their top laners set, they can, if it is a, a like star stroke, and out he could just go into the top lane and play whatever he excels in the top lane. So that really benefits you guys. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wasn't star stroke playing ADC to begin the season? Because I remember landing against him in a level six power spike. Um, so. Part and parcel of this is he he's played Starstraw has played three roles for us: um, eighty carry, jungle, and top. Um, in the last week, just kind of prior to this, we had our uh, fantastic captain who had led us stoically to the semifinals decide that Rampage Open was too good for him and sub subsequently rank out, um, which obviously is <laughs> it. It, it created a great deal of even more instability for us having to scramble around. So there was certainly points. Uh, Stars played in three different roles for us, and even up almost up until the day of the semifinals, we weren't sure if he was going to be at 80 carry for us, if he was going to be jungle, if he was going to be top. So <laughs> much much as, again, the, the target, being able to rotate people around target ban style is as well, um, we tend to practice that policy that if we don't know what we are doing, often the enemy team perhaps doesn't know what we're doing either. So, 
Uh, we <laughs> kill them through confusion rather than it's strategy. the brain. It's the brain games meme with the guy touching his head. It's like yeah. if we don't know what we're doing, they can't know what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> brain games. WWT had me particularly not all of icon but me in a loop when we played them in semifinals on stream i was just gonna bring this up when we picked the, I, Russian jungle in the first two games i was yeah. so shook like shaken i was shaking in my boots because i did not know what the fuck they were doing or sorry i didn't know what they were doing um it literally it took the whole team trying to calm me down telling me just play like you normally would and obviously in the end it didn't help too much i got out jungled by a thresh which i'm not proud of um uh, Chan, well, I don't know if you listened to the cast, but um, me and Switch the entire time during the first two games, we were talking about how whenever you see a non-conventional jungler like the Thresh, the best thing to do is invade him. Like you could have, no, you could have so like that whole match. Was I should have. Him. I was telling myself I should go invade. I should play, play aggressive. You yeah. yeah. You I yeah. I, always play aggressive. Yeah. It's just a weird pick like that because they're not good at either. So. Especially in the slow elo, weird picks yeah. definitely um, they work. They're anything non-conventional is conventional in Rampage Open. So I mean, I think that I think that's a really good point, especially due to the fact we're talking about top laners. And when you're thinking of wait, we're trolling Scrog, um, he may be the epitome of unconventional top laners yeah. in the league. I uh, love I mean, watching Grog he's, play. He's played 14 different champs. And... Yeah. So, how many yeah. games is that? Like, uh, there's like there's ten been... matches. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. That's Jesus. ridiculous. That yeah. There's, I don't. I haven't seen anyone with a champion pool like that. So I just. I really like Grog. Watching Grog play because you never know what you're gonna see him pick. Probably gonna be something weird. So it's always well, fun. And, to see and, that. and that's and again, I feel that's really important as well in regards to developing strategies against. Uh, you know, Grog, for even, wait, we're trolling. You can't really target ban Grog out because, once more, if you if you pick something you feel works for you, uh, Evil Gambit. Like Evil Gambit had Malphite last week, who's one of, kind of, Gambit's signature champs. Well, yeah. Grog's going to go play Morgana top into it and absolutely wreck <laughs> Gambit's date. Yeah, that was pissed me that. off so much, seeing yeah. how flexible they were on their champ picks. That didn't make sense to me. And to the rest of the team, really. And we all got thrown off by it. And that's ultimately why we lost. But it's insane how much WWT seems to troll and it works in their favor. <laughs> yeah, because mid lane does the same thing. I think stuff. the is why he plays lost. a lot of choke gap mid. Um, no, just uh. So let's go ahead and move. Um, we've talked a little bit about the top positions just with uh. Starstroke worst support AL. We talked about his thrash and like just the fact that Starstroke can flex to the, the uh, jungle position. I'm sorry, the top lane position. Let's go ahead and talk about Elo wins for uh, the mid lane in WWT. Uh, known for that Aurelia and the Karthus. The Aurelia just more of the solo carry style champion and the Karthus who was just pretty much busted, right? Well, the fact of the matter is, again, is that both top lane and mid lane of weight we're trolling really epitomize the spirit of the team. And that's not to sell a uh, worse support AL short, far from it. But that being said, you know, if you're if you're conventionally sitting up there in a tournament draft or a pro draft and you see Aatrox picked early, where do you think again chances are it's gonna go? Chances are you're not sitting there thinking that Elo's gonna EO is gonna take it mid, but he's done that, and that's one of his signature picks for the preseason you know we've got threat fresh first picked in one of those games goes jungle you you can't simply with this team go okay there's this champion chances are it's going here or here because they will be more than ready to take that into an unconventional role in an unconventional position and subsequently dominate you with it so yeah um during the champion select i actually i can't remember which one of the players I met, uh, messaged on WWT, but I messaged one of them and I was like, what the hell's going on with this pick? Because I had no idea. I think it was the Morgana top into the into the, the uh, Malphite that you mentioned, but there were just, the, the response I got was look at our team name. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you like the fact that you mentioned they do epitomize the team name, the spirit of that team. 
the unconventional picks and just they've definitely been able to uh find a play style that works for them and uh no one has really been able to punish them for it well and and for me if you're looking at again top lane or mid lane for we were trolling you just have to look at simply you know despite having lower kdas in a lot of cases than perhaps you know rar's group the damage per minute that those unconventional picks are putting out are far more than other Rampage open people who are in their role in comfort picks in traditional champions that you would assume for that. You know, They're very aggressive players. They draw a lot of attention to themselves during the match. Yeah. If we're they, I mean, the... they put a lot of pressure out on the map. I remember I got invaded constantly by their mid lane, top laner when we played them. Um... Yeah, if we're looking at the... Uh... The damage per minute, just for the 10, player, 10 or 12 players that we are looking at, uh, the two players that have the highest damage per minute is actually uh, Elo wins and Grog for WWT. They are putting out absolutely ridiculous sticks. AD carry numbers. <laughs> yeah, AD carry numbers. Well, and again, I think that's a real testament to, you know, bo both of them. You know, if you look at... If you look at EO wins, you would sit that you would look if you just looked at their OP.gg and go, okay, well they're silver three, you know, they're or they're we're silver four, like silver four for the majority of the season. And they're sitting there putting out, you know, the some of the highest damage per minute in the league, which is impressive to say the least. Like that's that's a real feather in EO's cap. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about I love you, say it back. I've seen his Nivia get banned every time I've seen him play, so I'm get through because he I've needs never to be seen banned. It. He has it, a good yeah. Nivia. I played it with it before. <laughs> it's very yeah. Cool. That, that's why I want to see it. I was like, if it's getting banned every time I see like his see him play that champion, but I don't think we'll, we will get to just because like we had a 6k gold me. lead with two tanks that were ahead, and as Nivia just shut down all siege. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't wave clear. Uh, no, I mean, you can't push against an Anivia because of that wave clear. But I'll be interested okay, to um, see if oh, I was gonna say I'll be interested to see if they ban the Aurelia because that kind of that's gonna hurt a lot of I love you say it backs champs at least the ones that I played with like Anivia, um, Ori. So I'll be interested to see if that's a ban or not for more. Well, yeah, yeah um, I'm not really sure. Go ahead. Uh, well, just just speaking honestly again, I think I think Eo's champ pool is very conducive for playing into conventional mids and based on i love you say it backs kind of anivia oriana here with the conventional champ like the conventional mid lane champs you know you could if you take the aurelia away does that mean that a chogath or alternatively an atrox gets dropped on your face instead like that type of flexibility you know it's 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 pick your own poison so also sitting in a meta where they're ridiculously strong picks right now like Galio that just can't get left up so if we saw Elo wins on a Galio who is honestly the most busted mid lane champion right now that would I, I don't know if we've seen him play it yet but with that the, the raw damage coming out and him already having the highest damage per minute that would be the pick for him okay oh. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look a little bit at our ADC matchups. We have uh, Marvelous listed as the ADC for WWT, but I think he's actually been playing support recently, correct? Uh, yeah, I think he's been playing support most of the season. I think he has one game on ADC, I believe. So it'll kind of be interesting to see how that plays out during the final. Yeah, we do have Unbound, um, who's actually been playing ADC for WWT. And one thing to look at is his KDA. His KDA is 7. Uh, KDA that is, player, baby. Yeah, KDA player. <laughs> He's actually got a uh, pretty good gold permitted also. Uh, re really good with that CDS. And, uh, and I think most of the games I've seen him play, I've seen him play something like the Kai'Sa. So just he really enjoys those hyper carry picks. Yeah, and more on that, I feel like just because Grog and uh, Wins attract so much attention to themselves during the game, it really makes it easy on me as an ADC player because not much jungle presence happens bottom lane. So yeah. I really kind of get to play my own uh, play style, my own pace down bottom. Yeah, you get to set up your waves. Uh, and one thing I've noticed about Marvelous is really good about getting that vision down for you. So even mm -hmm. if the jungler is coming, you guys, the time he gets there. So. Yeah, the bottom is always lit up with wards when we're playing together. 
Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's so much other team as their their mid and top lane are making it easier for Jungle to play Thrash, AD Carry to play Kaisa in a safer lane. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, there was a little bit of discussion earlier about he is the ADC, correct? Yes. I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. Kineki, yes. Um, and you said that he just recently came in? Yes, he just joined uh, last week um, because once more our ex-captain ranked up to gold three, so he had to leave. And um, I won't go too far off into a tangent as I want to do, but <laughs> we, we, we were unable to take anybody from Rampage open to potentially fill our ease up for us because of like the rules and regulations in regards to that, that you can't, you can't, if the team's been eliminated from playoffs, you can't have that person sub in. Because we only had seven teams, everybody made playoffs. So we had to scramble to find somebody who was suitable enough that could be uh, put in that situation, and we ended up with Kaneki as a result. So. Yeah, that's really unfortunate, but I feel like Kaneki might be a good player. I was looking at his stats, and I feel like he did pretty well in that uh, semifinal match. He definitely was really... He, he was integral to us. We. It's not just simply in the games. You know, the fact if he's not there, chances are we aren't able to play for one. And for him to to step in completely new with a team that has with no practice with that team and to perform like that, it's admirable. Like you, mm -hmm. I have I have to tip my hat to him. So. So feathers, you've actually been playing support for Raw, or haven't you? Um. The long story short is that uh, what, if it's if it's a RAR game, um, I'm playing it in some capacity because either somebody has to go uh, <laughs> for one for one reason or another. So in short, if you're if there's anything with me, I'm top, I'm support. I've played a little bit mid, subsequently fed my blank off, <laughs> but you know. Um, I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the uh, just play style in the bottom lane for R. Well, it's it certainly is rotated uh, partially dependent on meta and as well, quite frankly, you know, teammates. Um, in our first week, uh, we were streamed and we were team unnamed before we kind of decided, okay, well, we'll, we'll take we'll take the quote glorious RAR mantle. But, you know, we've so we've had aspects of where we will have, you know, those oppressive AP carry style supports like Zyra or Brand. Um, the One of our other general memes, for better or worse, is, is that our support usually gets put on a tank. So the joke is is that sometimes we just change that person, uh, level 6's power spike's name to Braum because <laughs> in, <laughs> inevitably it's like, okay, let's, let's end up putting uh, this fine fellow on a tank player. Oh, Braum's open. There you go, have Braum. So, so. <laughs> some Braum and Alistar, gotta say. So, yeah, those good supports. Yeah, they've definitely taken over the meta a little, like, in the bot lane. I think we saw, uh, in the three games that we saw this weekend, I think we saw Braum and Alistar get picked up in both games, if not banned out. Okay, um... And so we mentioned that there's not much jungle pressure uh, coming with Unbound, he's not receiving a ton of jungle pressure just because Grog and Elot wins are carrying so hard. Um, and that really has given Marvelous a lot of time to actually make even, I've seen him make roams into the mid lane if I'm thinking correctly, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. And if you remember from the stream last week, whenever Ramus went top in like that third game, uh, worst support AL on the Sejuani was always bottom for a counter gang, so we were always getting uh, stuff rolling bottom while things were going on top lane, which really allowed the, uh, the vein to the Kaelin to kind of get something going in my favor, I guess. Yeah, vein into Caitlyn is just a terrible matchup if you're on that vein side, but if you're on the Caitlyn, you're just going to have a great time never getting audited by that vein. Um, yeah, and I was really lucky to get a ton of jungle presence that game. Yeah, I definitely, definitely helped you guys out there. Um, I think it just uh, says a lot about the communication and vision you guys had set up, because you saw the Ramas coming and, and good positioning to just already have your jungler moving towards the bottom lane, and that isn't something we've seen a ton of. There hasn't been a lot of people 
taking advantage of when the jungler shows on the map. So good on you guys for taking advantage of that. Uh, Another thing about those first two games on the uh, the Thrush, it was so frustrating, like, we had no early jungle presence, like, I feel like it worked out later out on in the game, but like, first 20 minutes we had no dragons, we had no uh, pressure on the other team, so, I don't know, I, wa I went back yeah. and watched the stream, and I was actually dumbfounded that we actually won those two games. No, that's, yeah, that's what, me and, what I mentioned earlier with me and Switch. You just mentioned that you guys didn't have the jungle pressure going on with that Thresh, and that's why I said to Chan, we should have been invading on that guy. He had no, no jungle pressure. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, those unconventional picks definitely helped out. I think one thing that didn't necessarily work out in Chan Wu's favor was that Udyr pick, uh, just because it wasn't very mobile, because I think he... Did you take Flash with the Chan uh, the Udyr? I'm sorry, Udyr? Yeah, I don't think he played. I think he was. I know he yeah, played. No, I was gonna no, say. I'm I, sorry. I'm not thinking of the Udyr. Two seasons. Yeah. Um, I must be thinking of uh, one of the other series I cast this weekend. Sorry about that. That's all right. But um, let's go ahead and talk about just how these uh, teams work together. Um, we talked about on the side of uh, WWT, they just have really good top and mid pressure. There's able to pick up those solo kills which just means grog has to 1v2 in the top lane so just buys a lot of pressure counter invades going to jungle pressure uh get those neutral objectives um well and i think it is a testament to wwt that even though we've kind we we continually talk about top and mid again and as well as well we should but it also underscores, you know, the fact of the secondary or even like, you know, tertiary win conditions for them. Because again, Unbound had a fantastic series and we're like for the semifinals and, you know, we're talking about, well, okay, like, you know, Grog 1v2ing, he, like wins generating massive pr pressure mid. I mean, I remember yeah. when I was peeking on the stream, all I remember is Unbound going legendary. Right, <laughs> they're, they're top and mid draw all the jungle pressure, and then their AD carry sitting at a seven KDA playing Kaisa every game. Yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden, so now that we're out of lane and we're team fighting, Kaisa just pops off. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much how it works. I, I don't think I'm a very good lane player, but I think I'm really what I'm really good at is team fighting. That's kind yeah. of what I play towards. That really yeah, helps with uh, the team's play style. Well. And... and I think that the fact aren't uh, like you. You said that you aren't fantastic in the lane is really uh, helped out by the fact that your laners are so it yeah. doesn't give the other team room to take advantage of the fact that you're not having a strong lane phase. Yeah. You don't go top. Top goes 4-0 oh in lane. <laughs> <laughs> does does Kaneki have a good laning phase feathers? Or I mean how does how does he play? I mean the lane? I... <laughs> I'm, I'm curious because I didn't I watched part of your game but I didn't watch all of it last weekend. Um, I I think again, uh, Kaneki is very very effective, or was very effective in the semifinals in regards to later game team fights. Um, and obviously, the joy of the mobility of Kaisa, you know, a any competent AD carry player, I would say, you know, it at some points it gets really fun being on Kaisa or Vayne or anything like that, because as soon as people lose sight of you. You know, things can get out of control in a hurry, and you're able to turn those team fights post 25 minutes in a hurry based on your items, based on, you know, if you lose sight of that person. So I think both AD carries bring bring that aspect in regards to elusive AD carries rather than obviously kind of the more the crit AD carries that perhaps are kind of falling, like not really in meta right now. So yeah, it feels bad, man. Yeah, it'll actually. It'll actually actually be interesting with all of this discussion that we're having about the two teams to see if any of the weaknesses that we've exposed or any of the strengths that we're talking about get get uh, talked about since you guys have two more days to prepare before this uh, change. <laughs> it definitely be interesting to see if any of uh, those things get taken advantage of. If we see like some bot lane pressure coming through four unbound, something like that, give him a gank, get him rolling instead of just letting him roll through the mid lane phase doing whatever he 
Yeah, I don't know if I will play. I hope I get to, but I don't know if I will. Yeah, that's the one thing. We don't exactly have the rosters yet. Just life always can come up, so we don't play in yet. But uh Well, and and I'll just I'll just, you know, provide a small anecdote to just give an example of that. On Wednesday, we lost our captain. On Thursday, Somebody said, oh, I just got called in for, for a work shift. I can't get back till this time. And so, you know, it, it wouldn't be rare if we didn't, if we weren't again having basically to kind of continually juggle five different people just to make sure that we have the ability to play. So even for ourselves, um, I'll say, you know, right up front, based on how many people have played for our team, uh, especially in the last kind of three to four weeks, we're going to we're going to give those people opportunities, which means, you know, we're probably not going to have one person sitting top the entire game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So yeah, that's just the, that's just the nature of it. I mean, WWT has that ex- has that example of you know they'll they'll have two of the three people there in bot lane, but you know that you're going to have the rock that is Grog and and wins and all of that in those positions. Whereas for us, it's obviously a work in progress continually. Yeah, it's definitely a story of this team that has uh, been able to make very weird, unconventional picks work and have just a steady, honestly, a steady, consistent team versus this team that like you said, you guys have just been scrambling to find rosters to compete for the weeks, and it's really exciting that doing that, you guys have made it into the finals. I think that's really cool. I guess you could also say WWC also has like a really uh, pick your poison type of play style. Like, are you gonna camp top for Grog? Are you gonna get him behind? Are you gonna camp mid? Or are you gonna camp bottom? Because regardless, like if one of those guys are behind, someone else is gonna step up. Yeah, it's... it becomes really hard to kind of figure out what you're gonna do against this team. Well, and yeah. and I and I'm and I'm loath to say it because once more, you know, obviously with the new uh, NALCS stuff, but WWT stuff with how you've described it reminds me a lot of kind of C9 at Worlds or C9 again in kind of uh f- like summer split in the sense that you know if you're if you account for one person, well the other two could potentially pop off. So mm-hmm. you know. Like C9 at Worlds, we had we had examples where there was Licorice doing incredible work, Jensen sneaky, like, you know. Yeah, we definitely then... saw uh, those in- unconventional picks come through the, uh, the victory in the Aatrox. And it's always interesting to, even through a best of five series, uh, and adapt against each other. So I, I really like the competitive style of play, even with uh, non-professionals. It's it's really fun to see how you guys adapt against each other. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on to... Um, I think we've already covered strengths and weaknesses as a whole, like, as we've gone through. Uh, do we just want to go team by team and just list them out real quick, or since they just kind of got mentioned as we talked about players? Well, well, I think you got cut out a little bit, at least for uh, me, you did. Yeah. yeah oh, sorry about that. Um, I, um, we've already talked a little bit about the strengths and weaknesses as like the teams as a whole, but we did that like as we went through the positional. So do you guys just want to like talk about WWT, then talk about RAR in terms of their strengths and weaknesses? Uh, that sounds good to me. Um, if yeah, you don't sure. mind, I'd like to start. Uh, WWT for the first, like, first off, they're... They're not like any other team we played at all. <laughs> I can say this whole season, um, WWT and for some reason, I would argue Icon and um, RAR were the three teams to look out for. Um, it was really unfortunate that we got seated on opposite sides of the bracket, but WWT is like a completely different beast compared to icon or roar they don't play like we do they don't think like we do and everything just seems to work out when you know it doesn't seem like it will 
Um, WWT has a really strong presence bot lane because a lot of junglers like me, um, we get distracted with their top side. We want to shut down Grog. We want to make sure he doesn't have any say in the game. And their bot lane just starts snowballing and snowballing and it just turns into this whole mess. Um, their mid lane, he is insane. Um, I believe it's ELO wins or EIO wins. He's disgusting. Um, their jungler is really, he plays unconventional things and it works because it's Rampage Open and <laughs> that's what should be played. But um, WWT as a whole, um, I feel like RAR and Icon or Iconic, we were trying to almost mimic pro play and kind of just not really take advantage, but try to learn as we go on. But WWT, they came here knowing what they needed to do to win. And honestly, that's kind of scary. They're not playing to necessarily like, I don't know. It kind of seems like Icon and RAR have been playing from the back this whole time. Like we're playing to learn and um, WWT is there to teach us how we should play. I think the scariest <laughs> part about WWT is that they strong picks. Is that mm-hmm. they, they pay the pick, they play the pick. Play. And that's the scariest part about playing WWT is that they don't have to have the Galio, they don't have to have the Aatrox or sure. Gana top and dumpster you. Like, <laughs> so I think that's just a terrifying yeah, can... aspect to play against. I mean, sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, they, I remember they were hard to play for because sure. you can't you can't try to throw Dan's top um, mid. I want to say we had a couple that we were thinking of, and um, but yeah, their their laning face is just so strong. And then Unbound, when I'm sorry fighting, if you. Uh... If you play this weekend, your Kais is getting banned. Like, they, there's, there's I, I no hope. one else to ban. I'm sorry. I mean, they got banned <laughs> games two and three. I was kind of sad about that, but I still got to play Zaya, so I wasn't too yeah, sad. Yeah, so, so their lane's so strong, and then they have hyper carry ADC that starts taking over mid to late game, and they, they are pretty strong in all phases. I remember when we played them the first game, we just we took a lot of engage and just picked every fight we could. I think the game finished with over 100 kills in it. And oh we were God, up most of the game that. and lost one team fight, and next thing you know, we're losing. Yeah, the Heimerdinger game. Oh, uh, don't think... remind me. That was so awful. <laughs> that was like a 50-minute think... game. Yeah, that was. it was 40 or 50 minutes. Um, I'm was trying that to a cast it game? Uh, no, yes. they were pl- I, I know what they were playing. They were playing uh, Renekton, Aurelia, Nocturne, just all kinds of stuff that would like dive me as a Kai'Sa. Like, as soon as the fight started, I was, like, <laughs> shaking. I was like, get me out of here. I do not want to be here. ADC in 2018. I was <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and so playing that style and forcing fights and trying to make them uncomfortable, we ended up in a 50-minute game with Renekton and Heimerdinger and just ended up getting outscaled and lost one fight, and here they come you right, right back at us. I think that's what, that's what you have to do to beat WWT is just... Take the fight to them and play really aggressive. Yeah, you got to throw yeah, yourself. I was about to. I was about to say that. I think the one of the only ways that you can try to shake WWT is to catch them and just send a four man gank mid it. Something wild, well, like maybe so they're going to so they game right two and there. their their mid laner finishes nine and zero, top laner finishes seven and zero, and they win in twenty one minutes. Or it was very mm-hmm. fast. So I mean, they they can win different long, late games. They can win early. Yeah, you just have to like try to shake them off of their foundation, try to get them to start questioning the uh, the series or like the uh, the uh, the picks that they've made. But uh, let's go ahead and move over and start looking at RAR. Um, Feathers, we've uh, talked to you a lot today about RAR. Uh, just go ahead and give us one more a quick through. You said that guys have just been really hard to prep against because you don't have the same people coming in every week you don't have so that's definitely actually a benefit for you guys it may seem like a weakness but teams can't prep against it prep into you guys well again it's a double-edged sword that for the most part again has been used for our benefit we'll see if we fall on it uh, on friday but when when again you're kind of looking at or analyzing aspects of RAR, there are at least kind of common factors in some cases, whereas WWT is uncommon factors. And we talked about earlier in kind of the stream, the podcast, about the aspect of taking the Morgana that that perhaps teams like us or Icon 
have that kind of traditional aspect of mimicking pro play, whereas WWT perhaps has perfected that kind of, you know, that recklessness in some, like in, in one way of, you know, the aspect that if you, if you're in ranked and your person locks in Morgana top, if you're in solo duo queue, what's your first reaction? <laughs> Dodge. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And, and so just because it's inherently conventional, the fact of the matter is when we're looking at or analyzing this for WWT even versus us, WWT, the only series they dropped was a forfeit of their choice. So, you know, for us, it ha- we have to have the unconventional stuff in regards to our roles, whereas they're more unconventional with their picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and Roar plays a much more controlled game. Their, their mid laner controls the map really well. They're, they had one of the better team fights, I remember, the whole split. Um, and we had a vein against us both games, but they... They're they're a mid laner and a control mage that just controls the map so well. And then when they start grouping as five, they're they're very hard to to try to to win a team fight against them. But you gotta get there. Yeah, WWT in general is really frustrating to play against because it feels like you and your team are trying to play League of Legends and they're trying to play you. It's the whole game is just it feels like a minefield. You know, if something that traditionally might be a good idea. You know, yeah, you turn around and there's a, there's a more down on top. Level four. <laughs> and I think, I think that's something that's integral to WWT's composition. You know, previously, you know, in regards to the Icon semifinals, I don't know, again, I, I think it was you, Chan, who was just talking about, you know, getting shook very, very early in regards yeah. to those picks. And in regards to team fights, you know, it the team fight you lose at 28 minutes or the team fight you lose at 40 minutes and you lose a game, you can sit there and go, yeah, you know what? We had a chance. If we would have just locked down this person with CC, maybe we win that team fight. Maybe we win that game. Whereas if you're getting beaten down by a Morgana top, a fresh jungle, and you're sitting there, that that's demoralizing. So it's not just, again, they're not just winning, you know, the game out there on the rift. They're winning the game in your mind. They're living in your head rent free. So, <laughs> Yeah, I was I was definitely really upset playing against WWT. I was already like a little stressed out because it's my first season in Risen, and then Please. our ragtag team made it to semis, so I was a little on edge. And then as soon as I saw the Thresh jungle pick, I thought like, you know, they're making fun of me. Who the hell do they think they are? Um, so I lock in Warwick because they left that on ban, and I was like, this should be an easy clap because you know historically, whenever I get my Warwick or my Nunu. That's exactly what it is. I end up carrying the game. I get gambit we were fed. Running up into that game, I was just like, "Wait, these guys got all their comfort picks. What are we yeah. doing?" But in the end, I just got really shaken up by the the off meta games they were playing. <laughs> yeah. It was WWT in general. They're not playing League of Legends, you know. They're they're playing the <laughs> mental game. I joined the voice chat. It was just me and we're support AL. I joined, and he's just like, yo, I think I want to play Thresh Jungle today. I'm just like, um, all right, that's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go back and watch the VOD later, because I want to hear my reaction when I see <laughs> And Because I remember just being really confused, and like I said, men- messaging a couple of you guys, and like, We're what like, the well, hell is going on? Game one, we got on. nothing to lose, it's just game one. And then, and then uh, we load up game two, he's like, if they don't ban it, I'm playing it again. <laughs> just like oh god no don't do it oh man even that game too there was two really early infernal dragons and it yeah. really sucked not to be on those <laughs> it was just um i don't I mean, know we won but i wasn't a fan of the pick honestly yeah I'm being honest wwt is kind of insane uh i'm really upset that we lost so handily <laughs> i wish i could have put up more of a fight because I don't know. In my opinion, I'm probably the worst player in the league. I honestly, like, I don't know how I'm the only player on my team to make gold. Because I literally, I didn't even know when dragons spawned, and I'm the jungler. <laughs> I literally don't know anything <laughs> about this game. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I know is getting my teams fed, and when that doesn't work, I easily, on my team, have the worst knowledge of macro, micro, like... <sighs> it was weird, too, because I was watching those... Uh... 
yeah, the stream. And those first two games, like, it really came down to, like, these weird kind of things that led to the game ending. Like, the uh, the game one, Yasuo getting picked off in mid lane, and they just end the game. I was like, mm-hmm. okay. Game two, the Darius was really uh, far ahead, and somehow that just went away. And it just got shut down, yeah. Yeah. They started playing around the Darius, focusing him. As soon as he'd show up, they'd form in him and just pop mm-hmm. him. They did a really good job playing into that Darius. Like, we mentioned that we thought it was just going to take the game over, and it did for a little bit, and then they just realized what was going on with that Darius pick, how to play against it, and mm-hmm. really smart. Yeah. Okay, I think it's time to go ahead and give some serious predictions. What do you guys think? Um, Should there be no hitches in everything and the finals are played out normally? I think, honestly, as much as I hate to say it, because I love... I love Roar, and I love a lot of their team. I honestly think WWT has this in the bag. Um, the pressure from their top lane is ridiculous, and then when you're busy dealing with that, you look bot lane and realize, oh shit, like their ADC is 12-0. Got a triple kill. Yeah, maybe, we should, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't be dicking around top lane, and then the, the game's over. Okay, they, so- they're already in your head, and you lost. And well, you said that you think that it will go in the favor of WWT. What kind of score do you think we're going to be seeing? It's best of five series. Uh, three to one, honestly. Sounds I think, good. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Feathers, what kind of prediction are you giving us? You're gonna. Well, if I could plead the fifth, I would. Um, <laughs> but I I won't let you. Yes, I, I I figured as much. Plus I plus I'm not uh, American by nature, so that also. Uh, it goes against me. Um, that being said, I I do think that despite my own, you, know, you you always want to fly the flag of your home team. Don't get me wrong on that. But WWT, top to bottom, has so many different win conditions that come into effect at various aspects of the game. They have their their early game advantages they that often create a mid game advantage and then even if you're doing even if you're equal to them you know you've got that late game scaling hyper carry in the bot lane who just waiting to pop off in a team fight and subsequently wipe you um i think i think 30 for wwt or 31 is probably you know i think 31 is the if you're trying to gamble if you're trying to hedge your bets, that's where you would go. But I would all I look back at the previous series, WWT versus Icon. Like that was widely considered to be the hype match of the week. People advocated in regards to the stream vote. This is the series we want to see because the other option was, well, can Unhonorable back up all the trash talk that that he is so wonderfully known for and that we we love and treasure him for. But other than that, you know, the hype series for people, person versus, or team versus team was WWT versus Icon, and that was a 3-0. So I would have argued last week if people were saying, well, how close is this going to be? We'd be talking about, well, maybe WWT in four, Icon in five, or something along those lines. And to have a 3 0 sitting there, I find it very, very difficult to go against WWT to win this series. So that's just the fact of the matter. If I had to say, I would hedge my bets on 3 1 WWT, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes the other way, too. Okay. Okay. What are you thinking? Um, the last couple Rampage finals have been 3-0, so I, I hope it's not 3-0. Um, but I don't think WWT's lost in a couple months. I think they've only dropped two games the whole split. So it's 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 hard to think that they could beat them straight up. And then, so Roar might have some cheese that might get them for a game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they have enough cheese to get them for two games, but for just to try to beat them, beat them three out of five, they're going to have to play straight up at some point. And, and I don't, I don't think WWT is going to drop a game there, so... I, I hope it's 3-1. It's probably 3-0 just because that's how Rampage goes, and WWT hasn't lost in months. So I'd probably say WWT 3-0, unless Raw has some kind of good cheese for one game. Well, and it's so hard to find good Limburger around. Like, 
Okay, Unbound. Let's go ahead and get the uh, WWT opinion here. What do you think about 3 0 WWT. Thank you, next. <laughs> it would have been really funny if you said 3 0 R. I would have probably cried last. <laughs> I respect but yeah, Ferrari. Honestly, I haven't played like, them since uh, week two in the season, and they were a completely different team, so I'm excited okay. to see uh, what they're doing, though. These are honestly two of my favorite teams to cast. I love watching both of you guys play, and uh, it's going to be a really exciting series just from the play that I have seen out of all of you guys. Not just playing against each other, but playing against the other teams throughout the season. I think I'm going to have to give it to WWT with the 3 0. Just like we've said, there's so much ridiculous going on and just their lane really can't be shut down all right well okay. I'll, I'll say roar just to go against the grain we'll see. Gotta go I, ahead. I, I hope it's a, gonna... i hope it's a three two no matter what i want a five game series oh yeah i would Regardless love to see who five. wins i would like a i'd like a five game series yeah I mean... don't don't get Go ahead, I buddy. think if Rar does you, you, want to be you, you want you want silver scrapes. Like... I want silver scrapes, yeah. <laughs> I promise that if rampage. it goes to if it goes to silver scrapes, I'll I'll get on broadcast and I'll do Mark Z for silver scrapes. Like, I'll, better, I'll sing it for you guys. Two, take it to five, you guys take it to five games. I will sing silver scrapes for you guys. So clip that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not even take kidding. I'm line. free. I don't I don't do anything. Unbound interlane two games. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna have Unbound and Grog writing it down for two games, just so they can, uh... Just for the Silver Scrapes. For them. You got it. Like, it would be really funny if you did that, and then got cheesed in game three, just oh, through God. the series. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that will go ahead and wrap it up for us tonight. Um, don't forget to join us Friday, 8pm, Twitch as an underscore esports for the Rampage Open Championship. Uh... I'm not sure if I'll be there, but we will see WWT and RAR, so it will be a hell of a series. So uh, we will see you guys on Friday. Have a great night.